Okay, you guys. As you know, I have been doing some scientific study lately, and I have some more evidence here, that Santa Claus causes atheism. Now, what you're looking at is an unedited actual chat transcript that a bunch of us, there's about nine of us in the chat room at shockonow.net that we had. And what happened, an atheist came to the chat room. <clears throat> Someone emailed me and said, hey, Shock, uh, come into the chat room because this atheist wants to know if the Old Testament law still stands for today. And I'm going to talk about that also. But what is amazing is right here, and I'm going to cover the guy's name as to not embarrass him. You see where it says yes? Let's see if I could hide it. Okay. See where I, there was that blue and it says yes? Okay. I'm hiding the guy's name because I don't want to be embarrassed because it's pretty embarrassing what I got him to say. I That yes was an answer to him, and here's the other page, uh, talking about how he was upset. I said, were you upset when you found out there was no Santa? And I was honest. I said I was, and that was one of the things that led me to... Now, here he is. Let me cover his name. See where it's circled and it says, I was upset. That's his own, that's part of his name right there. I was upset. So the, the atheist admits he was upset when there was no Santa, but then he says, just like God. <laughs> I told you. And then there's me, just like God. See? So notice he says, just like God. I don't know if you can see that right above my finger. Um, so it appears that my theory that atheism is caused by Santa Claus is correct. So let's talk about that. And I got to go fast because I'm running a little bit. I'm not running behind to work, but because um, I can pick up time because it's such a far drive. Um, make sure I'm all zipped up. So here's how, here's my theory on why people become atheists, and it's what happened to me. When you're a little kid, hey, look at this old-fashioned uh, police car thing. When you're a little kid and you find out there's no Santa, it really messes up with your belief system. It's hard for you to believe in other things, like the atheist said in the chat room, like, God. So you see... What they do is they is to them Santa was God. They equate this man giving them gifts and everything. They think that's how God is, you know. Um, Santa says, you know, if you're good, I'll give you stuff. But see, God says no one is good. I'll have fallen short. I have to give you stuff. I have to give you salvation. So God is completely opposite of Santa. But anyways. Did you guys see in the chat, he said, yeah, like Santa. So, this all this time, we thought atheism was some... Hey, look at this, uh, my brother on the bike over here. All this time, we thought atheism was some, you know, difficult thing or some, you know, to find out. All it was is a humanist religion. And it's caused... This guy right here in the van is not allowed to do that. It looks like he's trying to turn left. It's caused, the humanist religion of atheism is caused by lack of Santa Claus. Now what happens is a child is so shocked that it, it, it actually has a reverse effect where they choose not to believe it in things. Now, when I first did this video, I received, out of all the videos I've ever made, I received so many comments, I forgot I'm a little behind schedule, from atheists about this, um, a lot of them that had been atheists, they became Christians, even admitting it. Like me, I admit that Santa Claus leads to atheism. And uh, there's a YouTube channel, Pure 30 End, I think it is. He even has uh, atheists come to his channel saying, well, what about Santa Claus? And they love to talk about Santa Claus. So my theory is now 100% proven accurate science that yes, Santa Claus leads to atheism. I have proven it. I have documented it. Um, I just showed you more data from the chat room where the atheist was very upset when he found out that Santa didn't exist. And then he even put, yeah, just like God. So you can tell there is a link between Santa and atheism. 
Now let's get to his question. Um, he's like, well, does the law in the Old Testament still stand? And the answer to that, and let's check, make sure everything is fine before we get on the mean, unforgiving, evil freeways of the Inland Empire. The answer to that is, Christians are no longer under the law. We're under grace because Christ fulfilled the law. But atheists, people and uh, agnostics, Wiccans, pagans, the Bible says they are under the law. Satanists, why are they under the law? Because... I'm going to tell you what Jesus Christ said, and he talked about the law still existing. What is the law? The Ten Commandments, everything in the Old, the Old Testament. This uh, helmet's real tight on my mouth here, so when I'm talking, sometimes <laughs> it pushes my mouth where the words don't come out. <clears throat> I'll blame my talking skills on the helmet, but no, seriously, it's kind of tight. So, do you guys remember when Jesus said, hey, listen, don't think that I came to abolish the law. I came to what? This is what we talked about in the chat room last night. I came to what? I came to fulfill the law. Well, why would Jesus say, don't think that I came to abolish the law? Because Jesus was an absolute genius. He knew that there would be people saying, well, since Jesus came and he lived and he died and he rose again, since Jesus came, I can do whatever I want. I don't even got to worship Jesus. I'm no longer under the law. But Jesus said, and he pointed that out for a reason. He said, don't think that I came to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. And then he even goes on to say, because truly I say to you, not one jot or tittle will be removed from the law. So if you are in Christ, did he fulfill the law? He did. So when God looks at you, imagine that I have um, eyeglasses on or spectacles. Let me get over here. When God looks at you, he looks at you, so to speak, through the spectacles of Jesus Christ. And when he sees you with that holy vision he has, you are perfected because Jesus Christ stands before you and God. He sees you perfected, not because of what you and I have done, but because Jesus Christ is done. Perfect. We are perfected because of what Jesus did in fulfilling the law. There is no condemnation on us. But Jesus Christ said in John 3.18, those that believe in him are not condemned. That is excellent news. But then he's got some bad news for those of you that hate Jesus Christ and reject him. He says, but those who do not believe are condemned already, making it present tense. You don't have to wait for condemnation. Those of you that haven't accepted Christ, you're condemned right now. You're like walking dead. Dead men walking. You're condemned already. It's, and he even says why. He says because basically they rejected God's only son. They do not believe in him. Read that. 1 John 3.18. Jesus talked about people being condemned already. So in the chat room, um, everyone there was a... A lot of people in the chat room also, during the time when I asked them this, the atheist this question, I, and I asked everybody there, I said, is this atheist already condemned to hell, according to Jesus Christ? And everyone said yes. And I said, now, would we all be condemned to hell if we rejected Jesus Christ? Everyone said yes. The key is Jesus Christ. God doesn't go by man's standard. And um, let me give some of my atheist friends some advice, okay? I used to be an atheist. I got friends that are atheists. I have subscribers that are atheists. I've subscribed to channels that are atheists. Atheists, 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 atheists. So I got no problem uh, with talking to atheists, me used to being one. And why is this guy coming in my lane over here? Um, but that being said, you guys need to come up with some type of proof. See, you're so focused on God proving himself to you. What are you going to do if he can't? You're going to cast him into hell? You are powerless, my atheist friend. You're approaching it all the wrong way in your arrogance, your humanist religion of atheism. What happens is you're not approaching God the right way. You need to prove to God that you are worthy of heaven and not hell. God doesn't need to prove anything to you because as we know, you've known this in debate class, God is not subject to any higher authority. So anyways, check out my channel, shockforever.com. I'm off on the mean, evil, unforgiving freeways of the Inland Empire. And remember, atheists, you need to prove to God that you're worthy. You can do that with Jesus Christ.